I want to welcome all of you that are here today. And I want to welcome all those that join us here on, on Facebook live streaming. You know, today I want to give you a word that has happened, actually has happened to me when my son was born. And he's already 30 years old. I've never had the release to, uh, to teach it, but I'm gonna, I, I already felt it, so I'm going to go ahead and speak it today. And uh, before I start, I want to release all the children to uh, Children Church. I believe we had Dan in the schedule today, but he's not here. So I'm going to ask uh, Sister Liana if you can help us with Children Church. Amen. And, and uh, this word, I, I do recommend that the kids do go to Children Church because it's going to be a tough one. Amen. This is for grown ups. So. Uh, you know, we just went through Halloween last night with all the ghosts and goblins. So this topic that I want to talk to you about is, is the spirit of death upon you? Is the spirit of death upon you? This happens for real. I guess you have to be in a certain level of your, of your life to realize what is happening. When I had my, my son, John, we had just moved to North Carolina. And... Uh, I already had Erica and I already had Pan, so then it was John. And uh, one day when we were in North Carolina, I had a thought came to my mind and I received it. I received it and it created fear. The thought was so simple. It's a concern. A lot of you are going to say, well, it's normal to think that. Yes, it's normal, but not when it's influenced by the devil. Not when it comes through the devil. It's not normal. And we have to be cautious not to receive anything like that because depending how you feel in your heart, well, me, but at that time, we were still new Christians. We were still walking with the Lord. And, and uh, you know, there were so many things that I was learning under the ministry of Dr. Jerry uh, C. McKinney, but there were still some things that we didn't know about. So when this happened, the only person that I had with me that I discussed it with at all was my husband. And he's the one that helped me through it. Now, this thought that I received was, who's going to take care of your kids if you die? And as mothers, we can relate to that because we do have concerns. But this statement was demonically influenced. This statement was demonically influenced. Are you hearing me, girls? And even men, it affects. It can affect anybody that receives this spirit. So this spirit is the spirit of death. That's what I'm calling it, because it was death, and I did call it. I called it, and I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you scriptures, and I'm going to teach you how things like this can happen. All right. So um, I'm going to start with some scriptures first. Okay. I'm going to lay out some foundations here, and. Uh, I want to start with uh, Escalitius, Escalitius 7, chapter 7. I'm not sure if I gave that scripture to Eliana and Josh. Escalitius 7, verse 17. I have some other scriptures, but I'm not going to... I'm not going to have you pull them up. I'm just going to read them. But this one, I do want you to have it open. It says, do not be much or do not be overly wicked, nor be foolish. Why should you die before your time? Mm, wow. Why should you die before your time? And that, is that possible? Yes, it is possible to die before your time. Because the, the scripture teaches that what life and death is in the, in the, the tip of the tongue. It's in the power, it's in the tongue. So if we're speaking death, guess what? You're calling the spirit of death because you're speaking negative. You're releasing it, you're releasing it, you keep doing it, you keep speaking it, and eventually that you speak it so much that you have faith in it and then the devil comes, all right? Now I'm gonna read another version of the same scripture and it says, um, it's a little bit easier to read. It says, do not overmuch wicked in other words, don't be too much wicked. Don't, don't overdo it. First of all, we're not supposed to be wicked, all right? Because Christ is in us. We're the temple of the Holy Spirit, amen? We're the temple of God. Neither be thou foolish, 
And this is where the, we get it. This is where the devil attacks us because we become foolish. We put our guard down and we do not uh, protect our hearts from demonic influence. You see, uh, a lot of Christians say you cannot be possessed when you're a Christian. Well, if you're a true a Christian, you will not be possessed, but you can be influenced. The devil, the devil will throw you thoughts, and if you receive it, you're going to get it, all right? So I'm going to read 1 John 1, 17, and you don't have to put it up, Josh. I'm just going to read this few scriptures. It says, but, walk, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his son cleanses us from all sin. You see, if you're speaking and you're walking in death, that's what you're getting. You're walking in darkness, therefore you are sinning. You're in sin because you are rejecting the light. You are rejecting the presence of God, amen? Because God is light, sin is darkness. Acts 4.12, it says, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we might be saved. You see, we are, we have salvation through Christ Jesus. We are saved through Christ Jesus until eternal life. Amen? So it doesn't matter who you pray for. If you're not praying in the name of Jesus, nothing is happening. Because he is the only name you can pray in. If you pray to um, other gods, other entities, if you pray to somebody else in the name of the saints, you're not supposed to be praying to the saints of the Bible. You know, they're brothers in the Lord like just like you are. Amen. They became overcomers and they are in the heavens with God. Amen. But here on earth, we're not to pray to any other false god. We're not supposed to use crystals uh, or the huevo and things like that because it's not in the name of Jesus. And I had spoken about this to somebody else and they said, well, I do pray. I do pray in the name of Jesus. But are you using the huevo? That's witchcraft. That's the practice of voodoo. And I said, you can't, because you're using that egg, and you're putting your faith in that egg. And of course, they disputed the subject with me, because they were refusing to believe that they were doing wrong. You see, you, if you believe in Christ Jesus, and you want healing, you have to pray directly to God through the name of Jesus. You don't use werewolves, you don't use herbs, you don't use crystals, none of that stuff, because you are basically placing your faith in that item, amen? You're not placing your faith in God. So in James 3.18, it says, whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe in him is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God, amen? So I'm going to go on to uh, my script, my teaching, amen. Uh, let me just change here. <clears throat> but I hope I'm laying a foundation here for you that the only way to be delivered from the spirit of uh, death is through the name of Jesus, amen. For we are covered by his blood, amen. Uh, I'm going to read Ephesians 6.12. Ephesians 6.12, amen. It says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this, over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. So when we are uh, going through this thing, like for example myself, when this thought hit me, I was opening my spirit, the, thought, the devil threw that thought to my mind, since it was demonic it, and my heart was open, it grew root. And I thought, oh my God, you know, we're here in North Carolina and there's nobody. In Houston, I, was, I felt all alone and I was by myself raising my kids, you know. And then in church, we were in church, we had our brothers and sisters, but still, I always felt alone because I didn't have family close by. So that created me to be vulnerable, you know. And, and, uh, and so, you know, that just leads to other things, amen? So when I had my son and we moved to North, Car North Carolina, so we were farther away from family. And uh, so I was like, oh my God, when I received that thought, what if I do die? What if I do die and who's gonna take care of my kids? Because at that time, I didn't have the confidence that my husband could handle it, you know? But throughout the years, he has proven to be a great father, amen? And I, 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 you know, 
I always felt like it's the woman's job to raise the kids. That's what, how we were raised, you know. The women take care of the kids and men go out and work and bring the money and you clean house and everything. You know, the traditional roles of a man and a woman. So this fear began to grow. And I began to get more worried. I began to, the fear began to increase. And by the time you knew it, I was getting depressed. I was crying. And then my husband noticed. He goes, what's wrong with you? You know, what's going on with you? So I like, eh. and I started crying out, what if I die? Who's gonna take care of the kids? <laughs> you know, and uh, so then I told my husband about it. So then he said, honey, nothing's gonna happen to you. I said, but, 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 but what do I do, Di? What's gonna happen, you know? And um, so my husband helped me through this. And the thing is that since I had already opened the door to this demonic spirit, since I uh, allowed it to come in because my guard was down, I did not understand those uh, spiritual principles, it got me. It took me about four years to get rid of it. It's not something you get over right away because once it gets a hold of you, it's not gonna wanna let you go. It's gonna fight for you. It's gonna keep its stake on you. So I had to pray more. I had to read the scripture more. I had to study more. And I had to fight more. I had to do spiritual warfare against it. But no matter how many times I prayed in the name of Jesus, uh, it, it wasn't going. And I thought, but I thought that if you say in the name of Jesus, those demonic spirits will flee. Because that's what the Bible says. Right. Yes, it does. But the thing is that in my heart, I was still wounded. In my heart, I still had that fear. So I was keeping that door open. Do you understand what I'm saying? So, you know, uh, John, um, let me give you the scripture. It says, let me look for it. I have it towards the end because I was going to save it. Okay, I'll tell you as soon as I get to it. Well, um, so demonic activity, you know, it's, it's everywhere. And the scripture teaches that the people, God's people suffer for a lack of knowledge, amen? Because we don't understand spiritual dynamics enough to, to fight it. We don't understand enough, okay? So, uh, you know, it's sad because demonic powers move in the church as well. It's all over the Christians, you know, and the reason I say that is because I have discerned and we have prayed for people in the beginning of our ministry uh, where people were possessed by demonic uh, spirits and they would get delivered. But they didn't fill themselves with the word, they didn't pray, they didn't receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, so they, they didn't do anything. They were empty in the inside, amen? So those spirits will come back, and of course the scripture says that they go out, but then they bring seven more worse than him. So then you're worse off, okay? So we see a lot of people that are demon possessed, but you know what? We don't pray for them most of the times because those people are not ready to commit into reading the Bible. They're not ready to commit to praying. They're not ready to commit to a life of holiness unto the Lord because they don't want to leave the sin behind. They don't want to leave certain uh, habits behind, so they cling to what they they are and they they stay that way. You know. So we have learned not to pray for people because we don't want them to be delivered and to get seven times worse. All right, because that is going to happen because their vessel is clean. Amen. So it becomes an issue, even in the church today. It becomes an issue where there's so many Christians and sitting in those pews and those chairs that are demonically oppressed because they have not gotten to that part in their lives where they totally give their heart to Jesus Christ. Amen. It is written in John 10:10 10, 10, that thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, that they might have it more abundantly. You see, the enemy is always going to be after you so that he can kill, he can steal, and he can destroy you. Amen. Simple as that. That is the job it has. Amen. And, and we somehow as Christians kind of take that very lightly. 
we do not understand how the devil can be so powerful if you let him. If you let him, he is the most powerful thing in your life because you have opened the door to the demonic powers. You see? And not until you decide in your heart to close it up and to rebuke and renounce the demonic powers that are over you, that then Jesus can do something. Because Jesus, the Holy Spirit, is not... Uh, he's a respecter of persons. He, he is going to respect you because God gave you free will. You see, as long as we have free will, it is you who decides what you want to do. Not God. Not God. Amen? We are the ones that decide. And it's so sad that so many churches, we have people that are sitting in the pews that are demonic influenced. There are some that are demonically oppressed. And there are some that are possessed. Amen. So the church needs to preach more on these topics. You know, it used to be so popular in the days of old where people, Pentecostal preachers, used to always cast out demons. Now you don't cast out demons at all in the churches. You know, people just let them be. Okay, whatever, you know. But no, we are to cast out demons. Amen. Because not only until you learn and you have the victory about Christ Jesus in your heart, not until then you can have true liberty in Christ Jesus. Amen. And the sad thing is also that while we go to church and we think that we're okay, that it's just me. No, it's just not you. It is those demonic powers that are speaking to you and you're receiving that information. You see, um, there was this lady that came to our chairs years ago. Y'all don't, none of you know her unless you're related to me, personally to me. Uh, she said, oh God, the Holy Spirit speaks to me all the time. It gives me names, dates, address, and this and that, of, of what's gonna happen, and it comes true. And I thought, that's not the Holy Spirit. That's a demonic power. And you know how I know that? Does anybody know? I wanna see a hand. You don't have to say nothing, but you can raise your hand if you know why that happens. You see, a demonic spirit is moving to that person. That person is a, claims to be a Christian, born again, Holy Spirit filled, but yet they have been praying. They open their hearts to the wrong spirit. The spirit presented themselves as an angel of light, and they thought, oh, it's the Holy Spirit, because they were not under spiritual guidance of any pastor. They were rebels. You know, so they have been entertaining a demonic spirit, and in exchange, that demonic spirit gives them information. You see, so that person one day is going to die and go to be the heavens, and he's going to she's going to say, "Oh Lord, but I prophesied in your name. I spoke. I prophesied, and I I healed people. And I delivered, and this and that." And God's going to say, "Get away from me, you evil, wicked person." And that's in the scripture. Because they were not praying to the to God through the power of the Holy Spirit. They were being entertained by demons and they were praying to a demonic power. Amen. And how do I know that? I know it myself. I experienced it myself. You see, I'm not going to teach anything that I have not experienced. Because then what the hell am I talking about, right? So, let me tell you how that happened. <clears throat> Let me tell you how that happened. Amen? Let me take some water first. <clears throat> One day, I was praying in my bedroom. We were living in Katy, Texas. And um, I was having trouble feeling the presence of God. So I prayed. I was praying and praying to the Lord. Like, why don't I feel you, Lord? What's going on? What's going on, Lord? You know, did I do something wrong? And I'm here praying and seeking God's face. Did I do something sinful? Did I do something that you're not talking to me, Father? And I'm worshiping it. It was like 40 minutes of doing that. It was like 40 minutes that I was doing that. And this spirit came to me. I felt it, I discerned it. It came ooh, close to me. And right away, I said, get away from me in the name of Jesus, because I knew that was not the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't come to you from the outside. Yeah. You know why? Because you're born again. And who dwells in you? Who dwells in you? The Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is from the inside. God speaks to you through the inside in a small, still voice. 
Amen. You don't find them in the fire like he was telling the prophet. You don't find me in the winds and things like that. It's I'm a small, still voice. He's deep within us because we are the temple of God. Amen. So when that spirit approached me, it was even a light. It was light colored. It was not black. It was not gray, but it was white. But it came to me. And as soon as he approached me, I knew that was a demonic spirit. You see, if you don't understand that principle that God is in you, then when a force comes to you from the outside, you have to automatically reject it. You see, once I did that, I rejected it, then I was able to enter into the anointing, I was able to pray and everything, and then when I finished, I told my husband about it. You know, I had a hard time getting into worship, and this presence came to me. And my conclusion is that God was testing me. That was my conclusion. And I recognized that spirit, and I rejected it in the name of Jesus because it, it doesn't come from the outside. It's from within. Amen. So uh, let's go to Matthew 12, verse 44 through 46. Amen. And the word here says, Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I come out. And when he is come, he finds, finds it empty, swept, and garnished. Amen. Then goes, then goes he and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself that they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. Amen. So you see, this is what I was trying to tell you earlier, that if you're not replacing that demonic presence that was in you, if you're not replacing it with the Holy Spirit and getting yourself right before the Lord with reading his word and hearing it and praying and all stuff, that demonic presence gonna, it goes away. Because they pray for you. But then it comes back seven times worse. Amen. This is a good scripture for that to give you. So just as, as we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts. You know. We are responsible what we put in it. Amen. Now this is Revelation 3.20. Amen. Revelation 3.20. This is a scripture I wanted to read to you earlier. And it says. Behold I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and dine with him and he with me. The same works with the, the same works, okay, that's my little note. The same works with the enemy, okay? He comes in through when we let down our guard, amen? This is what I was speaking to you earlier. Just as, the whole, just as Jesus has to knock on your heart so that you can let him in, the same thing works with the demonic presence because he throws that in thought to your mind. You, he throws that thought to your mind you receive it, so that was the open invitation, amen? That was the invitation for the devil to come into your heart, amen? So that's why it's very important that we guard our hearts, amen? So how are people calling the spirit of death unto themselves, amen? How, are, how can people be calling the spirit of death unto themselves? You know, and it, it brings so many emotional unbalance. It's an emotional situation because that's how the devil attacks us. It's, we have our heart, amen? The devil throws thoughts to your mind and they come into your heart and it comes through the means of fear, which it did to me. Fear, amen? Through de depression, oppression, sickness, self-cursing and cursing by enemies, amen? Those are few, there's many more ways that, that the enemy can bring death unto you, amen? So I'm gonna go to point number one. And the first one is fear, amen? Fear. And let's go to uh, fear is an unpleasant emotion because there's so many people that live and walk around this earth with fear. They're constantly fearful. Oh, we're going to have a car accident. Oh, this and all that. You know, especially when it comes to their children, they become overprotective because they are fearful. Instead of trusting the Lord that God is going to protect them, instead of believing God has everything and has them in their hands and God is looking out for them, they begin to fear and they begin to do certain things in the natural, which indicates they are fearful, okay? Just by the way they talk, by the way they act, amen? So let's go to A. Fear just doesn't come all at once. It comes through a thought which hunts you, once in a while, it throws that thought, and then it begins to happen daily. You see, that's what happened to me. I received the thought, and then it began to happen more often, and more often, and more often. Daily, it was a daily thing. I was, then I said, oh my God, we have no life insurance. 
we live in North Carolina, how are we gonna get back to Texas? And what if my what if my husband can't take care of the kids? What if my husband then remarries and then this the wife that he remarries doesn't like my kids because they're my kids and they'll treat them like the Cinderella and the mother-in-law, <laughs> the wicked mother. <laughs> you know, I, all these thoughts came to my mind, and and I, you know, it, so so that was the the manifestation of fear, those thoughts that I was getting. Amen. So let's go to uh, B, please. Psalms 23, 4, it says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Wow. And isn't it amazing that the rod and staff, they comfort me? You know, and when you're a shepherd, if you have animals, you have a rod that you kind of help the rod, the, the cow or the chip or the goat, whatever, you kind of lead them to the right direction. And then if they don't want to listen to you, you get that rod and you boom, you smack them. You smack them on the head or on the back bend or somewhere, you know. You see, God does that to us. He guides us with a rod and a staff when we don't listen, amen. And when we're determined to go our own way like lost ship, God will direct us with his rod and staff. But as we're walking through the valley of, of death, uh, we're not supposed to fear because if we put our trust upon God, if we put our trust upon Him, then we know that God is God, God is caring for us. He has us in His protection. Amen? So let's go to C, please. 2 Timothy 1.7, it says, For God gave us a spirit not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Wow. Amen. Power, love, and self-control. Those are three qualities that we're supposed to have as God's children. Amen? Amen. Power, love, and self-control. You know, so he didn't give us a spirit of fear because if we trust him, if we trust him, that shouldn't have to happen. You see, but when it happened to me, I already had a little issue in my heart. I, there was already something there. So when the enemy moved, it got me because I had something in my heart already about that. And that was the open key for the devil to mess with me. Amen? So let's go to number two. Depression. Depression is a mood disorder that causes a persistent feeling of sadness and loss of interest. Depression is an ongoing problem. It is not a passing one. People can be in depression for years and years and years. They can die in their depression. So depression is a demonic uh, um, influence. It's a demonic thing to make you think that your life is terrible, that your life is not worth living. That's why so many people get so depressed and they don't even enjoy their lives now. They don't enjoy the people that are around them now because they're focused on things that happened 20, 30 years ago. Or they're focusing on the yesterday, the past. Because something didn't go right, so all their attention goes to that. Instead of enjoying the present time now that God has given them, they're not enjoying their family that is with them now their children, their grandchildren, and so forth, their husbands, their spouses, they're not enjoying it because they're depressed, amen? amen. And, and it's, a, it's a sense of feeling of sadness and loss of interest. You know, how many of you are depressed this morning? How many of you have a loss of interest? You have a sadness in your heart. It's a demonic power, amen? amen. Depression is not of God, amen? Because why? Because we're supposed to be full of the light of the Holy Spirit. We're supposed to be walking in the joy and gladness of the Lord, amen? amen? So depression, if you have it, you, you feel like you have it to a point, begin to pray against it and begin to see the light that your life can be prosperous, that your life can be excellent now, amen? amen. Hallelujah, and in the future. Uh, point number three, oppression. Oppression is also something else that the, the demonic powers affect God's people, amen? And I'm talking about oppression. You, you know there's people in the world that are oppressed. They have phobias. You know, they have phobias. Some people are, are lock themselves into their house because they have a phobia about going outside and getting germs. You have people that are afraid of, they have phobias about snakes and spiders and things like that. Or they have other phobias concerning the world. And it oppresses them and they stay in their homes day in and day out. That's a demonic power. They are being possessed and they need to be delivered. 
So being subject to cruel or unjust conditions, that's why people get oppressed, you know, because as they're uh, growing up, this begins when you're a child, amen? Oppression begins when you're little, because, you know, the parents like, hush, 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 don't say a word, don't do that, no vuelas para nada, que huecos fregados, como dicen, you know, excuse me, <laughs> that slipped. <laughs> You know, and they begin to say things like that to their kids, and their kids hear it in, day in, and day out. They hear it, and they hear it, and they hear it. And then they grow up, and they feel oppressed. I can't do that. I can't say that. I can't express myself because they're under oppression. Because those words have been spoken over them since they were children, and they, they don't do certain things because they hear that voice in the background. You can't do that. So they get oppressed and they, no matter what happens in their lives, they show no expression. They don't react happy. They don't react sad. They don't, you know, things like that. They're without expression. Amen? Because they're oppressed by demonic power. So that's this, this spirit moves in the church mightily. So many Christians are oppressed because most usually their parents were religious. You see, there's a difference between being religious and being a Christian. Religious is just knowledge in your head, but there's no Christ in your heart. That's religion. I have met hundreds of people that are religious, and all they do is bring judgment to those that are free in Christ. You know, you can't wear pants, you know, because the Bible says not to wear pants. Well, let me just tell you, pants were not even invented during the Bible times. You know, they were skirts. They wore robes. So men, where's your robes? <laughs> where's your skirts? <laughs> That's just a little humor, guys. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You know, it's ridiculous to say that women cannot wear pants or men's clothing. You see, it was talking more about homosexuals during that time because there was a lot of homosexuality going on. And they would dress, cross-dress. They would dress as women. You see, and that was an ab abomination to God. And he, he, you know, he said, don't be dressing like women, you're men. Amen. So actually, you know, and then the lesbians, you know, because there was a lot of that going on too. And they would dress, those are the ones that had the macho spirit, they would dress like men, you know. And uh, so that's why it was really happening, not happening. It was not because women are not supposed to wear pants. Pants were not, I think it's probably for the last maybe four 300 years the pants became, got in the picture, you know. But that's what he was really referring to. And besides, now they have girl pants and then they have boys pants, things like that, okay? <laughs> I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say too much on that topic. I'll preach it later from Monday night. <laughs> Amen. So, so being religious is more condemnation. If you see somebody that's always condemning you by wearing makeup, you're not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, and this, and, and submit to your husband, and this and that, they're just taking the word out of content. They're not really studying the whole topic. They're just reading certain, the superficial, the, the super lining of the word, but they're not really studying it. So they be, that becomes their condemnation against those that are truly free in Christ, amen? So they become oppressed, amen, and they begin to get oppressed in their mind about certain things, and, um, and you can only be delivered by the blood of Jesus, man, when it comes to oppression, because you gotta get rid of all those things that are in your heart. You need to receive healing in your heart, you know, especially the women, because we're the ones that were more traumatized about things. We were more traumatized about certain things than men. Men were given liberty. Men were, they, you, you do whatever you want. And then go, good job, good job. The more you see, they slept with women, the better the macho they were. <laughs> you know, that's how it is with men. And women is like, oh, you can't even wear shorts, or you can't do this because then you're a whore, you know? And uh, so we grew up all traumatized. We grew up traumatized. I was traumatized when I got married, and my husband wanted to have sex, and I'm like, no! We can't have sex, no, my mother's gonna find out. <laughs> you know, how many of you women know what I'm talking about? You know, because I went to church with my cousin, Catholic Church, and 
and I would come home with Ash Wednesday with a thing in my forehead and everything. I am a Viputa, you know. And I'm like, I went to church now. <laughs> you know, things like that. That's the kind of stuff that happens to women. We grow up traumatized, you know. And then those that have free reign, well, that's a different subject, you know. <laughs> uh, I'm just a little humor, guys. Um, so it took me a long time to get delivered from that. I had to have counseling. And I'm telling you the truth, I needed counseling. My pastor had to counsel me. And I'm like, no, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about sex, no. <laughs> That's a dirty word. <laughs> Let's go to Ford. <laughs> Sickness. of the body, amen, whether by infliction or genetics. Some conditions supposedly we get them because it's in our DNA, amen. But some things are inflicted because of poor eating habits or we do drugs or we do certain things that are not good for our body because we overdo it. Even overeating, amen, uh, the enemy uses that to control you a certain way. You know, isn't it amazing that when Adam and Eve were in the garden, they were enticed by an apple? What is apple? Apples of food. They were enticed with an apple. Like, oh, it's so pretty and shiny, and I want it to taste good and everything. So they were enticed by the enemy with an apple. So that tells you right there that even the, de the devil will use food to bring you into sickness junk food, and all this sugar that we eat, all this stuff that we have, you know, that um, that we eat that is not healthy for us, you know, and then we begin to develop diabetes and we begin to develop hypertension because of stress and things like that, so we eat more and, you know, you become emotional eaters, so the devil begins to use food to bring on sickness, amen, and, uh, and we have to be cautious about that because we eat food to have the energy for our bodies so that we can stay healthy and so that we can survive, amen? Not, um, not to sorry, this like entertainment. Um, you know, I'm gonna say something and I hope I don't offend nobody. I was an emotional eater. It took me a long time to figure that out. But you know, but since the church is always preaching that you can't go to the movies, you can't do this, you can't do that, you, because all that is of the devil, you know, you go to the church and you, all you see is fat people. Because they don't have an outlet. You see, God created us with pleasure. God gave us the ability to enjoy life. God gave us the ability to have fun. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying life, but when people are put in oppression, like I was talking earlier, oppression, when they're told that you can't go to the movies because it's of the devil, you know, that's where we have to judge. How is this movie? Is it good, wholesome? Is it demonic? You know, it's up to us to decide what is good, amen? But there's nothing wrong in joining a good romantic movie or, it's like, you know, like, uh, what's the name of the dog? The, the, the dog that came out in TV a long time ago? It was, some, well, the mo, the, 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 it was a series, and then all they did was focus on the dog, because the dog was a good dog, you know. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> anyway, so oppression can lead to sickness because of what we are told as we're growing up. So we have sickness in our body because we are overeating and doing other things. Okay, let's go to A, Josh. It says, heal me, Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. For you are the one I praise, Jeremiah 17, 14, amen. So you see, we, if we have some kind of oppression in our heart that is creating other problems, God can heal us, amen. God can heal us, and we can be delivered, and we can be better in Christ, amen. Let's go to B. Hope deferred, amen, which is to put off, makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life, and that's in Proverbs 13, 12. You see, a lot of times people that are oppressed lose hope. 
and losing hope opens the door to more stuff. Amen. It opens the door to sickness. Because once you lose hope, you are opening the door to the demonic presence and, and you can even die because people have died hopeless with hopelessness. People have died because there's nothing to live for. Nobody loves me. They're in their lane in their bed dying before their time because they just gave up on life. Amen. So, and number five, self-cursing. Amen. How do you call the spirit of death? Amen. So, how do you call the spirit of death? You call it by, uh, by fear, depression, oppression, sickness, and now self-cursing. Amen. So, the power of the tongue, you're supposed to speak, you can either speak life or death. Amen. So, self-cursing comes from bitterness within the person, anger, self-doubt, insecurity, rejection, feeling unloved, and and from past generations, it becomes an iniquity, amen? You see, because from, uh, from parent to parent, they hear the word, no vales para nada, you're no good for nothing. And they hear that, and they hear that, and then they grow up and they feel like they're worth nothing, and they have no value in life. So they become, uh, they don't become productive citizens of the, of, the, of the system, amen? They become hopeless. And then the system has to care for them because they don't have the self-confidence. They don't have the, the faith that they can be productive citizens in society. Amen? So what you say about yourself can become a curse. If you're always saying, I'm fat, I'm fat, I'm fat, well, guess what? You're going to stay fat. I discovered that because I always had a problem with my weight. You know, even since I was thin, almost little, my sisters, todos delgaditas and finitas and everything. I was the only one that was chunky. You know, I was always... But I didn't overeat. I was a tomboy. I was always running and jumping and swimming and doing all these things. I grew up when I played with my brothers because my sisters never wanted to play. They all wanted to do, I want to do my nails, you know, or I want to grow my hair and this and that. I want to go play football, you know. So I would go outside and play with my brothers. So I grew up as a tomboy, you know, and, and, and uh, so I was, I never, when it came to beauty and things like that, girls, I, I was not into that. I didn't start wearing makeup till I got married. And, um, and uh, I started wearing makeup because I had acne, and so I would cover it up, and then I started taking care of myself more. But for the longest time, I didn't feel, amen, that I was attractive or anything like that, you know? And I could not understand why my husband would love me. And I said, why do you like me? What do you, why? Why did you pick me? I could not understand that he loved me, you know, because I had so many issues growing up, you know? So self-cursing, self-cursing comes for so many things that we speak against ourselves, and that opens the spirit to death. It, death in the form that you don't prosper, that you feel like you're worthless, you feel like you're not loved, amen? And also self-cursing, you're speaking death, amen, to yourself, and you will never grow and prosper within yourself. You will stay the same state all the time. You see, when, um, when Lot was told to live the Sodom and Gomorrah, his wife, it says, became a pillar of salt. And you know, Bishop taught him that one time because when she turned back, because God said, do not turn back, don't, don't even look. But when his wife turned back, knowing she was not supposed to, she became a pillar of salt within herself. She did not grow emotionally, spiritually, or nothing like that because uh, she longed for whatever was there. And it was nothing good because God destroyed it. So it was nothing but sin and uh, homosexuality and all that stuff. So, and that proved her heart to God. I would rather be over there. Like, oh, that my heart, her heart was there. So she became a pillar of light, not physically, but emotionally. She became a pillar of salt, amen? So self-cursing, you can stay as a pillar of salt. You will not grow emotionally. You will not prosper and in an advance emotionally because you're stuck in the past. You're stuck with cursing yourself. You're speaking death. Let's go to point A. <clears throat> on, on number five, self-cursing. So we have to be careful what we speak, especially to our children and to our family and to ourselves because uh, we can either speak condemnation or we can speak life. Amen? So A, by keeping cursed, or oppressed items in your home, amen, self-cursing. Okay, point number five. Many people are given items or they buy items and there's a spirit in that, in that item already. 
And we have gone to many people's houses where they're given objects and they're demonically possessed, okay? You see, there's an influence over that item because somewhere, somehow, somehow that belonged to somebody and uh, somehow they, they themselves called the spirit and they clinked on that item, okay? Uh, like uh, horseshoes, like some people put them up in the walls for good luck. Uh, some people hold on to family heirlooms and things like that, and sometimes they come with a with a, a spirit. Okay, so we need to be careful that we don't keep items or or, or that are cursed, okay, or they're possessed in some way. And Deuteronomy 7:26 says, "Neither shall thy thou bring an abomination into thy house, lest thou be cursed things thing like like it." Okay. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. So we're not supposed to carry items or have statues or idols in our homes as a rep uh, representation of something that you believe in, okay? Because God, what, the way God sees it, he's a jealous God, amen? So when we are putting something, an idol or something before him, even though sometimes we might think, oh, it's just because of my faith. But sometimes it's more than that, and we might be deceiving ourselves. Amen? So God sees it as detestable. So don't carry, don't have items in your house that are possessed, all right? Or they're cursed. B. By speaking, James 3, 6, and the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body and set us on fire that the course of nature and is set on fire of hell. Amen? So by speaking, like I said earlier, the speaking is in the power of the tongue. You can either speak life or death. So by speaking, we are cursing ourselves and we are calling that spirit of death upon ourselves. Amen? So you can either die physically for real or you'll become sick, depressed, or oppressed, you open the door to something else, amen? So we have to be very careful on what we speak because a lot of times people bring uh, curses upon themselves by what they're releasing, amen, what, they, what they're speaking. So on Job 15, verse six, uh, let's go to point number uh, C. Uh, C. Um, by speaking, and this is also by uh, speaking, it's another scripture I want to share. Job 15, 6, it says, your own mouth condemns you. Not mine, your own mouth, okay? Your own lips testify against you. You know, how many times have we been around people that say they're Christians, and they just speak negative? And they're saying false stuff about other people, and they're just gossiping and things like that. You see, their own words testify against them, amen? about their state and their level in their Christian walk, amen? So D, James 3.10. I'm trying to rush here, guys. For the same mouth comes blessings and curses. My brothers, these things ought not to be. You see, you cannot be of the light. You cannot be saying I'm a Christian and I'm walking with God, and then yet you're speaking death. You're speaking darkness. It's a contradiction. So then that has to be evaluated. You, it cannot be. You, darkness cannot be where the light is. That's what the word says. And you cannot be gray either because the Bible teaches that if you're gray, if you're in the middle, he's going to spit you right out. Amen? So we have to be either in the darkness or in the light. Amen? And that's up to us to decide because he gives us free will. But that's an indication of where the person is. Their actions speak louder. Amen? Uh, so let's go to E. Psalms 141, verse 3 says, Set a guard over my mouth, O Lord, keep watch over the door of my lips. You see, we have to be cautious about what we're saying. Amen? We have to watch what we say. Amen? Because what we're releasing, if you're speaking it by faith, then you're calling that back unto you. Amen? You're, you're sowing a seed, and you're reaping back what you're talking. So you're reaping destruction and, and damnation and condemnation to yourself, Guess what? It's going to come right back to you. You're speaking a curse to somebody else. Guess what? It's going to come right back to you because you're speaking curses. Amen? Let's go to point number five. Another way to call the spirit of death is by uh, speaking curses, spoken curses by the enemy. Amen? We all have enemies. Amen? Uh, people can place curses on you just by what they say or express to other people. 
Amen. They're talking. I'm just talking. I'm just telling. I'm just saying. But the power that comes from your heart is what you are releasing. You see, one a long time ago, this pastor told me, I don't let everybody pray for me. I only let certain people pray for me. And I and, and uh, I always understood what he would say that. I, I, I go, like, why does he say that? I, I could not comprehend what he said. So sometime after hearing it so many times, I just let people that I know love me pray for me. And then finally one day I asked, I said, why? Why, is that? why do you say that? I heard you say it so many times. He goes, because if they don't love me, when they pray, they're going to release what is in their heart. They're going to release what's in their heart, and it could be a curse instead. Because the heart... Jesus said, it's not what you eat that defiles you, but it's what comes out of the heart that defiles. Amen? What comes out of the heart. So you have to be careful that the person that you're, that's praying for you cares enough for you. Amen? Or doesn't have anything against you in, your, in their hearts. Because if they do, when they're praying with their mouth, guess what? Those are just words. But it's whatever is in, in the heart has been released spiritually, and that's where demonic... Spirits come because they're cursing you. Amen? So God does not hear those prayers of the evil people. Amen? God doesn't hear those demonic prayers, but the devil does. The devil picks up on that evilness in your heart, and then the devil moves. Okay? So that's how curses are spoken over by your enemies. It comes from their heart. Amen? And God doesn't hear their prayers, but the devil does. Amen? Because the devil is their father. Amen? That's, you cannot be hating you cannot be uh, speaking evil against other people and say i love jesus it, it doesn't work like that amen so let's go to james three sixteen. it says for where jealousy and self-ambition exist there will be disorder in every vile practice you see we have to be careful that we're not flowing in a spirit of jealousy or self-ambition you know you're trying to build yourself up amen so but it will cost nothing by but disorder in your life amen james 3 8 on point number b it says but the tongue can no man tame it is unruly evil full of deadly poison amen so that's what happens when we call the spirit of death we are releasing it we are speaking it and it brings death either physically or spiritually amen and I've gone past. Um, I've gone past my time to teach. You know, and I'm sorry I'm keeping you here longer. Uh, I do have more stuff to say about this, but I'm going to save it for part two. We'll do a series on part two for this topic because, you know, we have to be aware that that spirit, the devil, is always waiting. And when you say something negative, you just gave him the key. You gave him the key to your house, right here. You gave him the key to your house to attack you. You just open the door, amen? amen. So please stand, amen? We're gonna go ahead um, and open, um, get out the offering, amen? I pray that, um, I was gonna pray for you guys, but uh, the time has passed, it's, I'm already, you know, I'm sorry, getting late, but I will pray for you, amen, because just as I learned about the spirit of death when I was delivered, just as I learned that the enemy can deceive anybody if you don't understand, amen?